thank everybody for coming today. I know it was really cold outside, and uh, it was very cold in my house. I could just about blow smoke rings when I walked into the <laughs> kitchen this morning. So, but um, anyway, thank God that we're all here for Sabbath, and uh, let's pray. Your Heavenly Father, as we go through this service today, help us to do it in a way that honors you and gives you glory. Lord, let our words be your words. And Lord, um, please be with those that don't have shelter. And even though I complain about being cold in my own house, there are people out there that live in the streets and don't have a home. And I can only imagine how cold they must be. So, Lord, um, thank you for all that you do for us. And help us to give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
We worship God with our best resources because God has provided what we need the most. Salvation. Apart from me, there is no Savior, and his salvation embraces all aspects of life in him. There is full redemption. This was the experience of a man named Roger. His dad was a fisherman, and his mother died during his early childhood. Roger coped well because of the love and support of his dad until something terrible happened. While at sea, his dad had to climb to the top of the mast. He fell into the water and was nowhere to be found. At the age of 14, Roger was an orphan with no one to pay for his school fees. He became partially homeless, spending some nights at relatives' homes, some nights sleeping in fishing boats by the sea, and other nights sleeping in trees. He would steal raw vegetables from people's gardens to fill his empty stomach. He was so poor that he had to wear all three pairs of his pants, one on top of the other to cover himself to escape this harsh reality. He started drinking alcohol and rapidly became a heavy drinker. But one day, Roger heard about the gospel and accepted Jesus as Savior. His life was transformed. He was healed of his painful emotions, quit alcohol, settled in a job, ran his own business, grew a happy family, owned a house, sent his kids to school, and lived with the purpose of introducing others to his Savior. In response to the exceptional redemption he experienced, among other things, Roger decided to worship God by faithfully returning his tithe and offerings until he died. What has the Savior accomplished in your existence? This week, as we worship with our tithe and regular offerings, let us know an appropriate response to his salvation. Lord, we are thankful for the complete salvation provided to us and to Roger. Help us to worship you with our transformed life and to be generous with our resources. Bless this offering today. The money that we give, help it to go towards those in need and to help advance your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Llegó el momento de las peticiones. Si alguien, alguien tiene alguna petición. Doña Betty. Lord, praise, praise to my God for the great week I have, you know. En español. Uh, yes, and the, uh, I just want to let you know the son of my friend sent it for us. He is the son, you know, the only child. He lives in South Carolina. And he's it's in touch with me to me send all the picture of his mother that he never seen since a 12 year old. Mm -hmm. And I just I just praise the Lord that I'm able to get this, you know, to be used by God because all the glory to Him. And I need a prayer for my own. I'm leaving to Mexico to celebrate my mother. Thank God. And I pray that He give him all life. Her 86th birthday. And mm -hmm. prayer for my sister Mimi. She's traveling from Canada to Mexico. We, we live in the same time. It was a surprise for my mother because she lost a child last year, the 25th. It's a second child, she buried her, him. And we were not there, but now we will be with her, the Lord willing. Thank you. Okay. Para sus miembros, para enferma, para el... Um, el Dios para, para rec, um, recibir para salud. John Paul Caruth. John. 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 Yeah. Okay. In, in hospital para, is he still on the ventilator? Who? John Caruth. I, um, I'm not sure about that, but I know I'm here, it's getting better. He's improving, but he's still on a ventilator. Okay. At least last night he was. Okay. Okay, okay. Nos vemos. A pastor for next Sabbath to have a great welcome in this Seven Month Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. Union the Sousa mm -hmm. and Carolina and Isaac. I just want to okay. put a prayer. I'm not going to be here, yeah, but the Spirit will be here with you. And also for the hermanos that have not come, the family of the hermana Yasmin. El hermano Pedro, que creo que están enfermos, ¿verdad? También yes. están enfermos, enfermos. Muchos que no han venido. Así es que la familia de la hermana, los maestros también. Ah, también. Bueno, ¿alguien más? Si no, para. Creo que los invito a que se arrodillen para que imploremos a Dios por estas peticiones.
que moras en las alturas de los cielos, santificado sea tu santo nombre. Señor, en esta mañana estamos aquí, Señor, porque sabemos que podemos venir libremente ante ti para traerte todas nuestras necesidades, todas nuestras peticiones, Señor. Así es que, Señor, delante de ti está este pueblo que carecemos, Señor, de muchas necesidades. Necesitamos salud, Señor. Muchos de nuestros hermanos están padeciendo enfermedades. Te pedimos, Señor, por las familias de, de esta iglesia, Señor, que están padeciendo y que no pudieron asistir hoy este día. Te pedimos que tú las cuides y les mandes salud, Señor. Eh, también, Señor, por las peticiones de la hermana Betty, tú conoces, Señor, todas esas personas que ella mencionó por su madre, su hermana, Señor, y por las demás personas, tú, Señor, supla sus necesidades de acuerdo a su fe. Así es que, Señor, te pedimos también, Señor, salud por las, las personas, Señor, que mencionó Miss Duin. Tú las conoces, Señor. Ayúdanos, ayúdanos a acercarnos cada día más a ti, Señor, y tener de ti, Señor, todo lo que necesitamos. Tú eres nuestro doctor, Señor. ¿A quién más iremos? No hay nadie, Señor, a quien ir. Solo tú, Señor, que puedes escuchar nuestras peticiones y puedes mirar, Señor, nuestras necesidades y hacer, Señor, tu voluntad en nuestras vidas. Así es que, Señor, también te pedimos, Señor, por uh, esas personas, Señor, que de la calle, que solo tú, Señor, puedes proteger. Tú conoces sus historias, ¿por qué están ahí, Señor? Protégelas. Y si es necesario, Señor, si podemos ayudar, también ayúdanos a tener un corazón dispuesto, sensible, Señor, para poder ayudarles. Gracias, Señor, porque sabemos que Tú los cuidas y que Tus santos ángeles están ahí con ellos, Señor. Así es que pedimos por ellos y también, Señor, por nuestro pastor, que muy pronto va a estar con nosotros dirigiendo a este pueblo. Ayúdanos a ser de un una disposición, Señor, fácil de servir. Ayúdanos, Señor, a tener un corazón disponible siempre, Señor, para hacer tu voluntad y poder, Señor, a, a apoyar también su pastorado. Eh, tócanos, Señor, cada momento. Ayúdanos a estudiar tu palabra. También, Señor, pedimos eh, una petición especial, Señor, por aquellas personas que están asistiendo hoy aquí, Señor, a pesar de, de este frío. Eh, por Doña Tere, Señor, que hoy nos está visitando, por Chente y su familia, Señor, que ellos también están asistiendo con nosotros, Señor. Tú sigas tocando sus corazones y, Señor, ellos un día puedan dar ese paso decisivo, Señor, de tomar el, el voto del bautismo. Así es que, Señor, quédate con nosotros, bendícenos y danos de tu Espíritu Santo para escuchar tu palabra. Aumenta nuestra fe, Señor. Y que eso, Señor, nosotros podamos, Señor, poder estudiar tu palabra, para que nuestra fe siga haciéndose cada día más grande, Señor, hasta que tú vengas por segunda vez. Amén. Bendice a, también, Señor, a nuestros hermanos que están a través de, de, de la pantalla, Señor, tú los cuides a ellos. Y, Señor, gracias nuevamente por todas tus misericordias, Señor. Todo esto te lo rogamos y te lo pedimos en el nombre de ti, Hijo amado Cristo Jesús. Amén. 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 Romans 15:5. Say amen when you got it. Amen. Hmm. I got it early. <laughs> my God. My God. Oh my God, who gives this um, patience and encouragement help you live in complete harmony with each other as is fitting for followers of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 
All right, we're going to have special music with uh, Landon, Winston, and Eli. Can you go up on the platform? That'll get me the best. Bring it in toward the middle, Jason, if you don't mind. There you go. We need to move that down so we can see Eli. It's always good to see the kids involved with the service. Amen. Always love to hear uh, Gabriel do the offering call and said, you know, if we don't start letting Winston get up here and do something and keep Gabriel something to do, then I mean, Landon, he's never going to get a chance. So you did a good job today, Winston. I'm proud of you. And Gabriel, you did a great job bringing the offering plate down. It was awesome. Today's sermon is called Heroes of the Faith. Before I get started, let me say a little prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, help me today to deliver this sermon in a way that everyone can understand, that's clear, that is your word, not my own. Lord, help us to be inspired by the stories and um, to actually want to do all that we can do in our daily lives to, to help others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So in the history of Christianity, there's been many heroes of the faith. And it's always good from time to time to look around and look at what others have done for the cause of Christ. You know, sometimes we look at ourselves and we think, you know, I don't think I can do that. I don't think I'm good enough. I don't have the ability. I can't speak well enough. Um, and so we talk ourselves out of actually trying. And we can see throughout history that God really loves to use the weakest of human beings so that he can magnify his glory. It's not about our own glory and about how wonderful we are. 
It's about how wonderful God is, and God can do anything through anyone. Amen. They just have to be willing. So have you ever read the Bible stories about David, Abraham, Daniel, of Moses, and you think to yourself, I could never do that. I could never do anything great like that. The lives of Bible characters seem out of reach for us today, or impossible, impossible lives to live. Could someone actually live like that outside of the Bible? The answer, of course, is yes. Now, I'm a huge fan of Christian biographies. It is encouraging to read stories about Christians that went through trials and testing, yet they ended up being victorious. You know, a Christian who laid everything on the line for Jesus, or a believer who bled and suffered and even died for the cause of Christ. I love Christian biographies because they often reinforce the truth that I know mentally, but still find hard to believe at times, if that makes any sense to you. You know, we can live the way that we're supposed to. We can be victorious. Our lives are not our own. Jesus wants to use us in the world for his glory. So when we read stories about Moses or David, Elijah, Daniel, these were all great people of the Bible and they were great people of the Old Testament. You should remember that as great as they were, we have the, the ability today to do even better than them. How is that possible? We can do greater things because we have the benefit of the Holy Spirit, Amen. which has come to live inside of us when we accept Jesus Christ. And because of Jesus and the new covenant, we have access to the Holy Spirit. He lives within us. It's something they didn't have access to from moment to moment during their daily living. As great as they were, we are able to do even greater things through the Holy Spirit in accordance with God's will. We have numerous examples of people in more modern times that have achieved great things in spite of their human weaknesses. They've gone on to be considered by many as heroes of the faith. Heroes such as Amy Carmichael, Charles Spurgeon, Sojourner Truth, John Wesley, George Washington Carver, William and Catherine Booth, John Calvin, Martin Luther, Eric Liddell, Frederick Douglass, Ellen White, and many more. And for generations, missionary stories have inspired the next generation to go and serve as well. Missionaries aren't always born with exceptional gifts. They don't always have great talents. It's the everyday simple people like you and me who let God completely guide their steps that He uses to do great things, either here at home or far away. If you are feeling low on faith, or would just like to be more inspired, you can read about missionaries. If you read about missionaries of the past, you can and you will be inspired. Their story can give you hope and inspiration as you continue in your Christian walk. Okay. So, I want to give you a few examples uh, today of normal people that have done great things to further the cause of Christ. And if you'll give me just a second. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Things start to disappear always when it's time. Aww. But I've got it. Alright, the first ones I'm going to talk about, these some of these aren't always. Yes, ma'am. 
Alexis Translate? Yeah, that'd be great. All right, I'm going to start over from the beginning. <laughs> All right, just kidding. But, um, yes, that would be wonderful, Alexis. I should have asked you in the beginning. Thank you for your help. All right, so the, these that I've chose are, you may or may not have heard of, of um, some of these folks that I'm going to talk about. And um, purposefully, I didn't, I didn't pick people that you would automatically know right when I talk about them because there are so many hundreds, even thousands of people through the years that have done great things for Christ. And their stories are inspiring. And honestly, I didn't even know the stories of a lot of these folks that I'm going to read about. But it, it bears to mention, I think it's a good thing to acknowledge the work that other people have done. And then hopefully believe that you can do it yourself with God's guidance through the Holy Spirit. Okay. We've got Okay. All right. Um, so, the last part. what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to read uh, a few short biographies of um, five different people that have served the Lord. Uh, I'm going to read uh, partes de cinco biografías de personas que sirvieron al Señor. So they've, they've done great things in their life because they were led and guided by the Holy Spirit. Hicieron cosas grandes porque estaban guiados por el Espíritu Santo. The first is Adoniram and Anne Judson. El primero es de Adoniram y Anne Judson. Anne Judson. At the age of 25, Adoniram Judson was the first American missionary to Burma. Al 25, Adoniram Judson era el primer misionero first. Burma. Eh, fue el primer misionero que fue a Burma. He and Anne married two weeks before they boarded a ship bound for India. Y se casó con su esposa Anne dos semanas antes de que fueran para India. From India, they were eventually able to make their way to Burma. Y de India pudieron ir a Burma. Judson would spend the next nearly 40 years of his life. Uh, Judson uh, pasó los casi 40 años de su vida. Living among and witnessing to the Burmese people. Uh, predicando y enseñando a las personas que vivían en Burma. Until her death, Anne was the friend of many and even more fluent in Burmese than her husband. Antes de que muriera, Anne uh, pudo ser más, hablar mejor el lenguaje de Burma que su esposo. Her husband was very academically inclined. He was very intelligent. Y su esposo uh, le gustaban mucho leer los libros. However, God used Anne to do most of the speaking to the people. Pero aún así Dios usó a Anne para poder hablar con las personas. Anne was not educated. Y ella no fue educada. Her husband was imprisoned and tortured. Su esposo lo pusieron en prisión y lo torturaron. But he never gave up on his God-given calling to reach Burma for Christ. Pero nunca perdió. Se dio por vencido. Sí, nunca se dio por vencido a hablar, a predicar a las personas. At the near of Judson had not only established, before his death, sorry, before his death, Antes de que se muriera, 
Adoniram Judson had not only established several churches in Burma, uh, Adoniram no solo estableció iglesias en Burma, but he had also given Burma one of the greatest gifts. Pero también uh, pudo regalar algo a Burma. The Bible in their own language. Les pudo regalar la Biblia en su propio lenguaje. So he translated the Bible into their language. Él pudo traducir la Biblia en su lenguaje. And he really wasn't a skilled linguist. Y no sabía hablar bien el lenguaje. But I'd say God helped him, right? Wow. Pero yo diría que Dios lo ayudó. Next is going to be Dr. David Livingston. Ahora vamos a hablar de Dr. David Livingston. As a child, he worked in the cotton mills to help support his very poor family. Uh, cuando era pequeño, trabajaba para poder ayudar a su familia. He learned perseverance, and he went on to put himself through medical school to become a doctor. Él aprendió a ser Oh. El pudo aprender de perseverancia, perseverancia y pasó por escuela, por la escuela médica. He later followed in the footsteps of Robert Moffat. Y luego hizo lo mismo que Robert Moffat. Yes, and he went to uh, Africa to be a doctor missionary. Y fue para África a ser doctor misionero. Yes. He was a missionary, explorer, and champion of anti-slavery movement. Era misionero, explorador, y era contra tener esclavos. You know, Dr. Livingston used his influence and experience to, to fight great wrongs in society at the time. Él usó su influencia para poder. Um, para pelear contra las cosas incorrectas que pasaban en la sociedad. So he, he made a path for many, um, missionaries to y él hizo un camino para que muchos misioneros podían seguirlo. And see, he wasn't called to preaching as much as he was to, to um, providing resources for trade and other things that could help improve the lives of the people. Él no fue llamado mucho para predicar, pero para um, proveer... To the tools. Uh, para proveer... Um, Cosas que las personas necesitan. Mm -hmm. So, he was called to find routes, tools for trade, to end slave trade, and he worked tirelessly towards this. Y él uh, hizo caminos, uh, dio herramientas, y um, hizo opened up the roads so that people could take products from villages into towns. Uh, entonces hizo caminos para que personas pudieran uh, hacer o uh, llevar cosas a los and a las personas. And he worked very hard to end the practice of slavery. Y trabajó mucho para que se terminara la práctica de tener esclavos. So by the end of his stay in Africa, he was loved and respected by the tribes that he came in contact with. Entonces, mientras se quedaba allá, ya se ganó el respeto de las personas que vivían allá. And the important thing, he wasn't a preacher. Y lo importante es que no era predicador. But he was a Christian. Pero era cristiano. And through his actions, y por sus acciones, he was able to show the love of Christ to those people. El amor de a esas so we got another, this is a really great person in my eyes, but um, Mary Slesser. Mary Slesser, she, um, she was a missionary in the late 1800s, early 1900s. 
y otra persona que se llama Mary Slusser, que era misionera también. Now Mary grew up in the slums in Scotland. Eh, ella creció en las partes más pobres de Scotland. And you know, she had an alcoholic father and little hope of changing her circumstances. Y ella tenía su padre que era alcohólico y tenía muy baja chance de que sus condiciones mejoraran. So she was extremely poor, alcoholic father, didn't seem like she was going to have a promising career in anything. Entonces, eh, ellos eran muy pobres, su padre era alcohólico y parecía que las cosas no iban a cambiar. No, but for Mary, it was her childhood that taught her tenacity and strength to overcome those things. Y mientras ella era pequeña, uh, aprendió a ser fuerte para poder... Um, those hard times she experienced as a youth y esos tiempos que pasó con ella era joven served her well later as she was a missionary in Nigeria. Uh, le sirvieron cuando ella era misionera en Nigeria. Now, even though Mary's father was an alcoholic, she had a devout mother. Y aunque su padre era alcohólico, su madre era uh, devota. devota. Now, her mother would read the mission paper every month she would read it to Mary. Y cada mes, su madre le iba a leer los papeles de los misioneros. So there was a great desire to share Jesus with others that grew inside of Mary. Entonces, el, el deseo de enseñar a otros de Jesús creció. Now, Mary was 27 years old when that previous missionary that we talked about, David Livingston, she was 27 when David Livingston passed away. Y ella tenía 27 años cuando uh, el misionero David Livingston uh, murió. And Mary decided that she would go and continue his work in Africa. Wow. Y ella decidió que ella iría y continuaría el trabajo del misionero en África. So Mary's work began in a place called Calabar. Y ella empezó en un lugar llamado Calabar. She lived and worked in places where no European white person had ever been. Y ella trabajaba y vivía en lugares que ninguna otra persona de Europa había ido. And she faced life-threatening illnesses and hardship. Y ella uh, tuvo que pasar por enfermedades fuertes y cosas más. But mighty Mary as the locals, the name that they gave her. Pero, uh, las personas locales allí le pusieron Mary Mary. She did not once consider giving up. Ella no quería darse por vencida. She, went, she lived with Okoyong and Efik people for 15 years. Ella vivía con... Just say the native. She lived with the native people for 15 years. Ella vivía con las personas de allí por 15 años. Learning their languages and helping them to settle disputes. Ella aprendió sus uh, lenguajes y los ayudaba con problemas que tenían. She worked very hard to educate and overcome superstitions. Ella trabajó duro para educarlos y para uh, you know what the superstition? Superstition. So, she was trying to teach them a better way about Christ, right? Now, some of the superstitions that they had were twin killing. If someone had were twins were born, they would kill the children. They thought there was something evil about them. Uh, de los que matar a los gemelos, que eso era algo malo. 
And she also uh, fought for women's rights. Y también ella uh, peleó por derechos de las mujeres. She earned the love and respect of these natives. She earned their love and respect, as a, and as a result, she spread the gospel to other areas that no other missionaries could go in. These were hostile people. They would kill you, some of them, home just to see you. She was able to get in there and prove herself through her actions and not words. Uh, ella pudo ir a lugares que muchos misioneros no habían ido y poder uh, hablarles a Dios. So I got another one here. This is Jay Hudson Taylor. Y otra persona que se llama Jay Hudson Taylor. Yes. He, um, in the early 1900s, he served in China. Uh, él fue para China. So for 51 years, as a matter of fact, he gave his life um, to bringing Christ to the closed doors of China. Uh, por 51 años, él uh, trabajó en traer a Cristo uh, ya a las personas de China. And during that same uh, time frame, he founded what was called the China Inland Mission. Y él pudo empezar algo que se llama. You know, more than 800 missionaries were brought into the country. Él pudo traer uh, muchos misioneros allá. Through the through the organization that he started. Por una organización que él pudo empezar. So Hudson Taylor was a prayer warrior, and he was a faith giant. Él uh, era o le gustaba orar. Y tenía mucha fe. He was able to speak several Chinese dialects. Él pudo aprender muchos dialectos de China. And he helped translate the New Testament into the dialect used in Shanghai, China. Y él pudo ayudar a traducir la Biblia a un dialecto que usan ahí. Shanghai is where he spent most of his missionary life. Él pasó mucho de su tiempo en uh, una parte que se llama Shanghai. Now, one thing that made this guy so successful is that he he adopted their culture. Not that he gave up his beliefs, but he he was careful not to offend the local people. Uh, algo que le ayudó mucho fue que él empezó a adoptar algunas cosas de la cultura para no ofender a las personas. So he respected their way of life, their clothing, and he would kind of imitate the way that they dressed and the way that they act. Y uh, él respetaba uh, cómo hacían las cosas ellos o cómo se vestían y a veces trataba de hacerlo. And those, uh, that simple act there opened the doors to him and made people feel more comfortable. Y solo por hacer eso, pudo hacer que las personas uh, se sintieran más cómodos con él. So, but he faced sickness and loss, but he faced it with a spirit of unshaken trust. He always believed in God. Él tuvo que pasar por enfermedades y uh, pérdidas, pero aún así uh, pudo uh, creer en Dios. And so his le he left behind a legacy that's inspired thousands of missionaries all around the world. And listen to this great quote. Now this is what he said towards the end of his missionary life. So all of God's giants have been weak men. Todos los gigantes de Dios han sido hombres débiles. They've been weak men who did great things for God because they reckoned on His being with them. 
y eran hombres grandes que hicieron cosas grandes porque pudieron confiar en Dios. Now the Bible tells us that God is with us, right? Y la Biblia nos dice que Dios está con nosotros. If you believe that God is with you, si tú uh, crees que Dios está contigo, there's almost no limit to what you can do. Casi no hay límite lo que puedes hacer. So we can learn a lot from Him. Y podemos aprender mucho de él. And put that into our hearts. Y poner eso en nuestros corazones. All right, I'm going to do one more here. This is the last one. This is Amy Carmichael. Otra persona que se llama Amy Carmichael. Now, Amy Carmichael served in India uh, for a long time, from the early to mid 1900s. Ella fue para India y estuvo allá muchos años. Amy Carmichael, not many people really thought that she could have much of a chance to be a missionary. Y muchas personas pensaron que ella no tenía chance de ser misionera. Now Amy suffered from a condition called neuralgia. Ella tenía una condición que se llama neuralgia. Have any of you guys ever heard of fibromyalgia? Well, they, they're kind of similar in that you have a lot of pain and weakness in your in your muscles. Es una condición donde tienen mucho dolor en los músculos y sentencias. So Amy was often weak and in great pain, so great that she was confined to her bed sometimes for weeks. Y ella tenía esa condición y siempre estaba con dolores y a veces estaba muy débil de salir de la cama. Even so, Amy knew in her heart that God had called her to do mission work. Pero aún así, ella sentía que Dios le había llamado a ser misionera. With the encouragement of a few people, she went on to do missionary work. Uh, con la motivación de algunas personas, ella fue y hizo dobles de Dios. So, she went to India and she found her life's calling. She stayed there for 55 years without ever going home. Ella fue para India y encontró lo que Dios le había llamado a hacer y se quedó allá por 55 años. Now what kept her there so long was her passion for children. Y lo que la mantuvo allá por tanto tiempo es su amor por los niños. It was dedicated to ending child prostitution and giving a home and a future to India's many orphans. Era para terminar con la prostitución de los niños y poder ayudar a los huérfanos. You know, Amy was a prolific author. She wrote many books, and those same books have encouraged and inspired many throughout the years. Ella escribió muchos libros, y esos libros pudo ayudar a muchas personas Uh, And so when we we look at these people that I've talked about, most of them, there was nothing when you met them or saw them that would just make you think that they were so much better than you are. Y muchas de las personas no tenían nada de que si los conocías pensarías que ellos son mejores que que tú. They were normal people, but they did extraordinary things. Eran personas normales, pero hicieron cosas uh, extraordinarias. They had a faith in God. Que tenían fe en Dios. And a desire to do His will. Y un deseo de hacer su voluntad. God tells us that if we have faith in Him and a desire to do His will. Dios dice que si tenemos fe en Él y deseo de hacer su voluntad. That He will give us the ability through the Holy Spirit. Él nos va a dar la habilidad por el Espíritu Santo. So let's remember that each day. Y tratemos de acordarnos de eso todos los días. Especially in times when we think, I can't, I can't do this. Eh, más en tiempos donde pensamos que no podemos hacer. We look at John 14, verses 12 through 14. Uh, podemos ver Juan 14, uh, versículos 12 al 14. John 14, 12 through 14 says, Very truly I tell you, 
Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I'm going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me anything in my name, and I will do it. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that powerful? Yeah. Now, of course, you got to get the whole Bible and in in this in the context. You know, we know that when we're in the will of God, God is going to honor what we ask of Him. If we're outside the will of God, we can ask until we're blue in the face, and if it's not God's will, we won't get it. Um, sabemos que si estamos haciendo la voluntad de Dios y le pedimos algo, él no los va a dar. Pero si no estamos haciendo su voluntad, le podemos uh, pedir muchas veces. Pero si no es su voluntad, no nos los va a dar. So, my goal, I guess, for this sermon was for, for everyone to, to feel like they can do more, more than what they believe they can. Uh, este sermón era para que todos puedan entender que pueden hacer más de lo que ellos creen. Because we're not doing anything for God on our own actions. Porque no podemos hacer nada para Dios con nuestras propias acciones. If we're doing it for God, it's through the Holy Spirit and within His will. Si hacemos algo para Dios es por el Espíritu Santo y es porque es su voluntad. And Jesus Christ tells us that if we ask, it will be, it will be done. Y Jesús nos dice que si se lo pedimos no nos va a dar. So let us pray. Vamos a orar. Heavenly Father, thank you for these great examples of people that have gone above and beyond what they were normally capable of. These are normal people like myself and everyone else here that chose to follow the call, the burden that you laid on their hearts. They believed in you, they had faith, and then they moved forward. And Lord, you made a way. You didn't always make it easy. But you know it's because of those trials and those hard times when other people can see us struggle, yet we keep moving forward. They can be inspired. When things are too easy, what is there to be inspired about? It's that journey, it's overcoming those obstacles, overcoming the fear, and the pressure, and the danger because of our relationship with you, our belief in you. That's what inspires others also strengthens our own faith. So Lord, um, help us to remember this as we go through this life and we see all this sickness and everything around us that as long as we have faith in you and we believe in you and we continue to pursue you, you will always be there for us. And that we always have you to lean on and to look forward to. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we have a closing song. 6.33. 633 is going to be the closing.
thank you all very much for coming. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to go home today safely, to enjoy the rest of your Sabbath, to, fin to spend it with family, and to continue to worship you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.